From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Oh, my friends, there is so much for us to share with you today, and we're delighted to be in your homes. This first one really surprised me. Russia warns U.S. Senate over nuclear treaty. Did you ever think they'd warn our Senate? S-300 missiles unguarded on Russian bases. And Mideast, will it be peace or war? That's a very good question, and Jack's going to be answering that and much more for us today. Uh, he's going to be doing something that's very unusual today. He's going to really share something that he did when he was much, much, much younger. In fact, he started speaking on Russia and some of the things we're seeing in headlines today in 1958. And he was telling me that when he was supposed to see Dr. Falwell in 1969, he preached again on the coming war with Russia. And it was so effective that Dr. Falwell said, if you don't put that on record, I'm going to put that on record. I'd like you to see the record, if you will, right now in just a moment here, the record that he put out, the coming war with Russia according to the Bible. And that, of course, is... Boy, was Jack I young. Ben Whoa, <laughs> you were young, yes. That was in 1969. Whoa, well, 1969, that's a long time ago. But ever since I've known Jack Vanippi, and you've been watching this program, you know how much research he does for everything that he's put out. And I'm sure, Jack, that when you put this out, you did a lot of research for the coming war with oh, Russia. Oh, scores of hours, Rexella, searching out the greatest names of the prophetical world at that time. And there weren't very many. And we had Dr. L. Sale Harrison's, that I've already mentioned, Dr. DeHaan, Dr. Gabeline, Dr. Marmion Lau, Dr. Charles Pont, Dr. Louis Talbot, Dr. Edmund, Dr. Lockyer, Dr. Bauman, Dr. Dwight Pennycost, and Dr. John Walford, and then later, your brother, yes. a great prophetical preacher, Dr. Bob Shelton. And oh, it blessed my heart. But then I also studied the great historians, Justinius. Ooh, what that man knew. And the Encyclopedia Judaica, uh, the history of Israel. Just everything I could get my hands on, and you'll hear the results in a few minutes. All right, Jax. I know all the study you put in. I see it at our home. He spends about 40, 50 hours a week just in his study, well, preparing for this program. Well, friends, the Senate has just cleared a major hurdle to approve a new arms control treaty with Russia. And take a look, President secures GOP votes for U.S.-Russia nuclear pact. Again, Russia gives preliminary approval to the nuclear pact. And Obama gives the Kremlin a seal of approval. And nuclear treaty goes easy on Russia. Whoa. And again, the new start Russia warns U.S. Senate over nuclear treaty. Now, that's what they call it, the New START Treaty. My, oh, my, this is something that I need to ask, Jack. Is this going to work? It says we're going easy on Russia. Will it really work? What do you think? Absolutely not, and I wish I could stand before the Senate and Congress and give them the message on the coming war with Russia according to the Bible. Rexella, this non-proliferation treaty is absurd. I mean, there are hundreds of nukes, and to say that we're going to eliminate all of them is an impossibility, especially uh, when they are stumbling on them. We've lost control over the nuke situation. They have thousands of them in Russia, unguarded. Pakistan, the Islamic terrorists want to get a hold of some of them, and when they get them, watch out. Now, it all started 
when our president said to Russia, and the New York Times revealed this, a secret agreement was made with Russia that if they help America control this maniac called Ahmadinejad of Iran, they would give up their bases in Poland and the Czech Republic. And Russia said, oh, that's fine. That's wonderful. That's the beginning. At the same time, Russia was negotiating with Chavez of Venezuela to put a base there. And even now, it's a training ground for hundreds of Islamic terrorists who plan in the future to attack the United States of America. But this thing concerning bombs. Rexella, the Bible mentions that Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, is not just one single battle, but it's a campaign covering three and a half years of warfare. And the first invasion is when Russia uh, marches down, and that's Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39. In chapter 38, verses 1, 2, 8, and 16, we find that Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh create the war of the latter years and the latter days. And in chapter 39, verses 1, 2, 12, and 13, they're defeated. In Joel chapter 2, verse 3, we see a northern army marching into Israel and they're being pushed back to Siberia in verse 20. And as they're pushed back, the prophet sees blood, fire, pillars of smoke. It's going to be a nuclear holocaust. Then the second part of the invasion is when China marches. It's called the kings of the east, Revelation 16, 12, or the kings of the sun rising in the British Revised Version. And notice it's kings, plural, that involve North Korea along with Russia and some of the others in that part of the world. It's going to be the greatest war in history. Russia was just the beginning. It's not going to be as tragic as when the second invasion takes place. And listen to what it says in Revelation chapter 9, verses 14 and 18. The angels heard crying, Loose the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates. Wow! That's where our troops are now in Iraq. And perhaps in Turkey very soon. That's where the Euphrates runs through. Why? To slay a third part of mankind, one of every three will die in that atomic war. And the number of the army was 200,000. The CIA has said, we now know that they have trained 200 billion men in China out of 1 billion, 200 million population. And verse 18 says, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, the smoke, and the brimstone. That's atomic warfare. And as Russia comes down in Joel 2, verse 3, a fire devours before her. Atomic warfare again. She's pushed back to Siberia. And then in verse 30, the prophet says, I saw blood, fire, pillars of smoke, the exact effect of a nuclear blast. No, the START Treaty is going to fail. Whoa. But it's going to be too late, too soon. The Bible is very, very clear on that. We'll discuss a little bit more on that in just a moment. But let's go on here with Russia, okay? Russia warns our Senate. Well, listen why. Russia successfully test fires long-range missiles. And I'd like for you to see how they're out maneuvering us on this treaty. There it is. Successfully test fires long-range missile and Russian tactical nuclear missiles, a U.S. concern. We're very, very concerned about it. America's dangerous rush to shrink its military power. We are diminishing ours. They're increasing theirs. And Russia warns Poland against hosting U.S. fighter jets. You know, friends, it looks to me like Russia's outmaneuvering us on this. They are certainly using every uh, tactic possible to be the winner on this treaty, and it looks like they are. And Jack has pointed out why the Bible mentions Russia so definitely. He referred to Ezekiel 38, Jack. Chapter 38, verses 1, 2, 8, and 16. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and then there's the name Raj, 
But listen, verses 8 and 16, it's the war of the latter years and the latter days. This is not something of the past. It's what's coming in the future. And I'll tell you, it's going to be devastating because in chapter 39, verses 1, 2, 12 and 13, it says, Behold, God speaking, I'm against you, O Gog of Magog, and I'll turn you back and leave. But the sixth part of the five, six of their armies are going to fall. And that's what the Arab Federation joining with them. It's going to be devastating. And verse 12 says, seven months shall the house of Israel be bearing of him. They shall sever out men of employment to work around the clock 24 hours a day in that period of just burying the dead from one of the greatest wars in history. But that's not the most serious one. It's when China enters, as we'll see later. All right, Jack. Well, uh, could we just go back and forth with some names yeah, yeah. there? All right. The first one that you've always quoted is Gog. G. O G. All that means is the end time ruler. But it's interesting that the Caucasus Mountains throughout Russia mean Fort of Gog, Gog's last stand. And many think it will probably be Putin because Medvedev has just been put in as a puppet. Okay. So we'll wait and see what happens. But we got the characters already in place. All right, then Magog, M A G O G. The Greeks called the Scythians, who have been given the credit for populating Russia, Magog or Megagites. All right, and then Tubal, that's in there also, Jack. That is southwest of Siberia. It's where Gary Powers, the U-2 pilot, was shot down uh, 20, 30 years ago. And if you see on the map, you'll see it, Tobolsk, the Russian suffix added, the SK but it's two ball. And here's so definite, R-O-S-H, Rosh. Yeah. The Bible says the chief prince. Now, chief can be an adjective or it can be a noun. It's incorrect here. It should be a noun. And the actual Hebrew word there is Rosh, R-O-S-H, which is Rusia in other languages and Russia in our language. In fact, today, even in Israel, it's still Arash, and that's been there for 2,600 years. I'll tell you, Jack, I have never ceased to be amazed, how about you, at the Bible's accuracy. My, oh my, well, something else. There are the names referring to Russia, but how about the direction? Is that in there also, Jack, where Ru uh, Israel will be invaded? Yes, and that's Ezekiel 38, 15. Thou shalt come from thy place out of the north hearts, a great army and a mighty people. Now, if you're standing in Israel and you want to go to the North Pole, you go directly through Moscow, the Northern Army. That's why Dr. L. C. L. Harrison, 60, 70 years ago when he wrote the book, The Great Northern Confederacy, said this is the way it's going to happen. And when you get to chapter 39, already quoted, verse 1 and 2, he says, Behold, I'm against the old Gog, the Russian prince of Moscow and Tobolsk. I'll turn you back and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause you to come up from the north parts and bring you upon the mountains of Israel, and you shall fall upon the mountains of Israel when you come from the north. Mm, Jack, so direct, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Well, you know, friends, worldwide, there's a great concern among many, many nations about smuggling. What are they worried about? The technical expertise and equipment that could be smuggled out to develop nuclear weapons. It could be smuggled out. Take a look, nuclear smuggling probe advances. Again, U.S. lost communications with 50 nukes. Ooh, for a time there, we didn't know 45 where they... 45 minutes, they couldn't find them, and had we been attacked, we'd been in trouble. Yes, and photos show S-300 missiles unguarded on Russian bases. And Russia to deliver S-300 missiles to Kazakhstan. And Iran successfully test fires upgraded Soviet-era missile. Oh, take a look at this. Iran globally recruiting scientists for nuclear program. Now, you know, friends, Iran is running a global recruiting network from around the world. These scientists to come to Iran to develop their nuclear program, and they say, we are going to get it. To me, we're living in dangerous times. Does the Bible refer to that just prior to the coming of the Lord? How about a nuclear war, Jack? Very definitely, Rexella. And the reason that they're 
hiring all these experts from around the world is because something tragic just happened to their computer system. And they say either the little Satan Israel, the big Satan America, tampered with their computer systems and it's called Stuxnet. In fact, that's one of the deals our president has already said made uh, with Russia. You help us control Iran and uh, we'll not put up our bases and we haven't but they're still selling thousands of their missiles to Iran. Boy, is that ever a great smart treaty, non-proliferation treaty. It's not going to work. Not only that, but right now, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, has called on America to sell the materials, including bunker buster bombs, to blow his installations underground out because they say he is a Shiite, hates us Sunnis here in Saudi Arabia, and we need to protect ourselves. And so America has just sold $60 billion worth of material to Saudi Arabia, including the bunker buster bombs. So uh, Saudi Arabia actually is afraid of Iran. Oh, they're afraid. Sure. A Muslim against Muslims, there's something wrong. They need a revival, of, as we call it in Christianity, in their religion. But Rexella... Does the Bible mention nuclear weaponry? Psalm 97, 3. Isaiah 66, 15. Ezekiel 20, 47. The flaming flame shall not be quenched. Joel 2, verse 3. Russia marches against Israel and a fire devours before them. And as I said earlier, as they're pushed back, the prophecies, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. Zephaniah 1, 18. The whole land shall be devoured by fire. Malachi 4, 1. The day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Revelation 8, 7. A third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned. And Rexella, what a book. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 12, describes the nuclear bomb to a T. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, the blast that occurs in the heavenlies. As it comes downward, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Do you know that Peter used that word elements 2,000 years ago? And in our day, the scientists have classified this nuclear weapon under E, elements. And when they tested it in New Mexico, the steel structures melted to the ground and finally the earth and the works that are therein shall be burned and that's the blazing effect found in Malachi 4.1 the day cometh that shall burn as an oven no Mr. President the START treaty isn't going to work oh my oh my Jack you know I was sitting here listening to Jack and I think some of you are saying whoa my heart is really pounding the world is in a mess Please remember something. If you have the Lord in your life, he said to you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He's coming back again. We're going to really talk about how to have peace in a troubled world. Oh, friends, another great concern. I know as you pick up your headlines that China's large-scale military buildup is another great concern because in considering the non-proliferation program, Oh, my, oh, my. China developing carrier sinking missile. Now, wait. China's military is developing a new anti-ship ballistic missile that can sink U.S. aircraft carriers. Can wow, you believe that man. one? And Russia, China praise their relationship very, very close. Japanese Prime Minister Anito Khan warns of China's military rise, and North Korea shells south in fiercest attack in decades. My, oh, my, they're not getting along. Millions mobilize in Korea, that's South Korea, defense drill. And North Korea will rely on nuclear might for defense. Again, Korean aggression shows what could happen if Iran goes nuclear. Now, Jack has often said that the huge, huge battle that he's been talking about will be taking place in the Middle East. All right, Jack, it's three stages there because it is a campaign, and you wanted to talk about the first, second, and third campaign, right? Right. I already mentioned the first one, which is Russia. When Russia says, 
I will go against them that are at rest, that are at peace. So the peace process is coming to pass and soon, maybe under our president, Obama. But it will only last for 42 months and then Russia makes the first move of the three and a half year campaign. But isn't it interesting that the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is a union of Russia and China. And you just heard the headlines. Uh, we are friends. We are close in relationship. We're going to defend one another. By the way, we are not doomsday preachers. All these headlines are reported by the secular world. We're just saying, hey, it's in the Bible. So don't blame us. We're just reading the papers, reading the magazines, reading the historians. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. But Rexella, in that second wave I've already described, we find in Revelation 9, 14 to 18, that the cry, as said once earlier in the program, is loose the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates, where our troops are stationed right now to destroy a third part of mankind. And the kings of the east, Revelation 16, 12, come down, not just China, but North Korea and others with them. And they come through on dry ground, and man, Turkey now has the Anatola projects which dries up 21 dams just by pushing a few buttons, and they can come across on dry land for the first time in the history of the world. What a book, predicting that 2,000 years ahead of schedule. And on and on we go. And Rexella, the battleground will be the Middle East, but primarily Israel. Oh, this is unbelievable again. 18 times it says that these armies from Russia and China and others, as they all come against Jerusalem, eventually, Zechariah 14, 2, come against Israel. 18 times, chapter 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice in 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29. There it is. I'm just giving you the Bible, but you heard the warnings from the secular world. You don't believe me or the Bible. Believe them. Mm, there's a lot of pressure right now, friends, to find a solution for the huge Middle East uh, situation that we find ourselves. There it is. Mini step date. Will it be peace or war? They want to know. Palestinian Authority says give us a state or it's war. And Ecuador becomes fifth Latin American country to recognize Palestinian state already. Hamas leader in Gaza vows, group will never recognize Israel. Abbas, no Israeli presence in future state. Hey, they're doing away with Israel. Hamas, Israel has two options, death or leaving Palestinian lands. And Hamas commander Israel will disappear. U.S. may cut Israel missile shield funds. Oh, oh take a look at this. Didn't we used to be on the same side? Oh, there. Obama has ruined that. And here we go. Jordan's Abdullah peace talks failure will drag the United States into new Mideast war. Now King Abdullah makes no bones about it. The United States will be involved right there in the Middle East in this huge war. Will this be World War III there, Jack, in the Middle East? Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel has just read his Old Testament and said, I found 813 verses that say Jerusalem belongs to the Jews. And when one adds the New Testament, it's 930 times. And yet President Obama says, we are going to give Jerusalem to the Palestinian Arabs and the Palestinian Muslims terrorists, Hamas, and Hezbollah. God help them. That's what starts World War III when they divide the land, Joel 3, verse 2. And wait a minute. When he said to Hillary, what's happened? Our president doesn't care for Israel. And I've got scores of articles that back that, but listen to me very carefully. This is where the problem is, and this is what's going to cause a bedlam across the Middle East very soon. And first there has to be the peace. And they've all called our president to come and make the peace. Four Muslim nations. Why? Ask a Christian if he's one to do it. All right, Jack. 
Remember I said, let not your heart be troubled. You know what? I'm going to make you a promise that if you will open your heart to the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you're going to have peace in this troubled world. My peace I give to you, if only you'll accept him. Jack, would you pray that prayer of acceptance, please? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Lord Jesus, I call on your name. I thank you that you died for my sin and the sins of all humanity. Thank you, Jesus. And today I accept your sacrifice on my behalf. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, save me today. Lord Jesus, do it now. Amen. Amen. Friends, there's my address. Write me and let me know that you prayed that prayer. I'll send you absolutely free this little book called First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord will walk with you. Our author of the week of the Mideast Crisis, Can Israel Survive? And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Bob? To order your copy of the DVD, The Mideast Crisis, Can Israel Survive? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Oh, thank you, Bob. I do want you to have this in your home. It's so very important. Make the call or write to us of the Mideast Crisis. Can Israel survive? Friends, a closing thought. I love it. Words spoken in love need no interpreter. All true. We look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you so very much. So do we. Bye-bye.